Hey, what's going on everybody? Senior Spicy here, back with another Pirate 101 video for you guys today. So I know it's been a little bit since I've made a video for you guys, but the Pirate 101 test realm for the Tartarus update is officially live. So I figured I'd make a video for you guys giving you my overall thoughts of it and information about the drops and the boss. I'm not really going to talk about story or any of the story spoilers because I want you guys to experience that for yourselves because it's only been out for a few hours. I think it came out, it went live around like 3.30, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and I played through it once on my Musketeer. I live streamed it earlier and uh, did one playthrough. It took me about, well, I streamed for about three hours, however, um, I was going really slow, and I talked a little bit in the beginning, so I'd say it's around two and a half hours of content. Like, two and a half hours, if you go really fast through it, kind of skipping dialogue, you could probably do it in close to two hours. Um, it's really not long, and so I don't really know why people were saying it's going to be longer than any of the Sinbads, because it's not. Um, but you can see that I'm in Tartarus right here. It's pretty much Wizards Tartarus, but reskinned into Pirate 101. And, um, yeah, so the first thing I want to go over are the update notes um, that came out earlier today. So you can see here the update's called Through Death's Door Test Realm Online. Um, I'm going to kind of just skim through this a little bit. You guys can read this on your own. But, uh, yeah, it basically talks about, you know, like, just basic it's just realm don't go too hard on us we know things are buggy and there are a good amount of bugs I know some people that I think can't even really get into the ship or the boat to actually go to Tartarus to even do the update um, but um, nevertheless Tartarus you can see here uh, kind of gives you a little bit of backstory talking about the uh, about why we're going to Tartarus and whatnot you guys can read that and here's some images here's a picture of uh, Hades in Tartarus and here is the gear set that drops from the boss the, uh, the shade boss and um, I think it's a pretty nice looking gear set it's um, from, from what I know it's literally just from Wiz as well um, but I think it looks pretty nice I like it um, I'm not a big fan of the helmet like the broken horns but the boots are really nice and something that's really Really hard to find are good looking boots in Pyre. There's not a lot of great looking boots really in Pyre 101, and these are pretty cool looking in my opinion. So um, you can see here one new set of Hades armor. You can see one set of variations for each class, and there's also there's also a dyeable class non-specific one. I'm assuming this is the non the the dyeable. I don't know, but um. There's also a new pet, Orthrus, which has 10 variations that will also drop, which is cool. 10 new housing items, um, as well as 4 new pet snacks, and then a couple of unique um, gear that are different from the gear in the actual gear set. And we're going to go over these real quick right now. So, you can see here the new totem here, and these are all universal. You can see the totem here, plus 1, 2, 6 on the health. Uh, I think they all do, oh well, well at least these two. Um, do they give a copy of Stygian Chorus, which we've seen other pieces of Aqua Gear give? It's pretty much just a line summon of five of these skeletal hoplites. It's pretty solid um, as far as summons go. It's one of the better ones. Um, it's nice you get a good amount. They're they can put up some decent damage. They're not over like they're not overly weak, so pretty solid um, summon if you're into that. Um, and then there's also uh, the Flanks Formation, Team Epic, Hold the Line. Um, and so it's team-wide, and it gives your entire team a rank of Hold the Line. Now, usually these are for like three turns, five turns, but there's no little hourglass that shows the amount of turns this, this is for. So I would assume that it's you get a rank of Hold the Line for the entire fight, unless they just don't have the listed amount of rounds but um, if it is for the entire fight that's pretty solid it's not bad um, it's nothing great um, I probably won't be using this totem really um, it could be interesting on something like Privy but really anybody else I don't see uh, you really needing to use this 
Now next up are the uh, is the ring here. You get two copies of Gorgon's Cry, which is a new power. Summon um, a Gorgon to an open square. Now I haven't tested this ring yet, or, or I, I haven't tested really anything. Um, but from what I hear, it's different from the Medusa summon that you get from the Aquila Doubloon. It's a different Gorgon, um, and it's pretty solid from what I hear. I have to see it for myself, um, but if you guys use it, if you guys get this item and use it, let me know how the summon is. Um, but, I, I, I mean, I'm not a, again, I'm not a big summon fan, so uh, yet again, I probably won't use this, especially two copies I don't think I'll need. Um, however, if it's a good summon, it's a good summon, so... It can't be too bad. Next up, um, Mask of Death over here on the left. Um, again, all of these are universal. And this pretty much takes the two eye patches, or two of the three eye patches, from Mu Manchu and just power creeps it and shoves it into one. Kind of dumb. I don't know why they do that. It's stupid. I don't know why they did this. But um, they did. <laughs> um, and I think I have a, a, an image somewhere of what the Mask of Death actually looks like, I'll have to check. But yeah, Soul Harvest and Soul Shroud, instead of being two eye patches from Mu, they shoved it onto one. Yet again, nothing crazy. I'm out of, I don't really like Soul Harvest, it just turns your defeated souls into um, an Ebon like summon, which is it's, it's pretty mid. And then Soul Shroud's pretty solid, but then again, there's just way better eye patches out there. Um, cool I think it has a cool aesthetic if you're into that not a terrible eye patch but there's just much better and now on to the necklace the uh, the amulet the charm whatever you want to call it one of the most broken overpowered pieces of gear I've ever seen added into Pyra 101 I mean if you thought black fog hat was bad if you thought frozen tide if you thought flames were bad I mean this is I mean this is up there this is up there as far as chains go and whatnot one piece of gear, universal, that gives double tap, mojo rising, and follow through. Absolutely disgusting. I don't know who designed this. I don't know who made this piece of gear, but whoever they were, they were definitely smoking something. Um, absolutely insane. Uh, rank of double tap. Um, I, I mean, literally every class can use, should should probably use this piece of gear, except for maybe like. Privy, I, I mean, unless you're doing like shooty staffy privy, then you might want to use this um, if you want to get some chains going. But really, I mean, every class can benefit from this, really. I, I, I mean, musketeers, if you're doing hybrid, uh, double tap and mojo rising are, are just a blessing for you. Um, just an absolute blessing. You can, you can run double tap five with this um, and not have to, not have to have double tap on your your pet. Or on your weapon. Um, I mean, you, you can have another copy of Mojo Rising uh, if you're a witch doctor. If you want to do melee witch doctor, you have follow through with Mojo Rising now. I don't recommend that because melee witch doctor is cringe. But um, and then follow through, which is literally relentless. However, it's guaranteed to hit, so it's just even better. And if you want to use the axe, the follow through axe, now you can have follow through two. Um, however, um, the hybrid melee classes really benefit from this. Getting double tap and follow through on your swashbuckler hybrids and your buccaneer hybrids is just disgusting. Um, yeah, the chaining possibilities with this now are just endless. Um, melee classes have fun. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Musketeers have fun. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's just broken. I, I don't really have much. You guys are smart. You guys know how good this piece of gear is. I don't really have to say much. Bye bye brass medallion. Hello Cerberus caller. And then also you can see here we have music sounds better with you. They finally have added a music player for your houses in Pirate. However, I don't really know how they're adding it. Um, so you can see like I thought it was gonna. Be, it, it says it's gonna be added to the crown shop. I don't see it in the test realm. It might be coming live realm. Um, however. There are music scrolls now, and I did happen to obtain a music scroll from Tartarus. You can see here, I obtained the Aquila Tartarus theme. Um, I did happen to obtain it. And um, actually, if you go to your house, they now have uh, an entire separate category for music scrolls when you're uh, customizing your house. You can see, there's literally 
music scrolls. Well, I don't know. Why is it? Well, I don't know where it is. But, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. So they've added that. Um, so, which is really cool. I always wanted a music player. Literally, your house is just silent if you don't have a music player. So, um, very nice addition. I hope that I can get a smuggler's theme or something as a, as a music scroll. Um, however, um, we're going to move on to uh, bug fixes here. So a couple bug fixes, nothing crazy. Leap Smash was fixed, one of the powers from the, uh, the Hoof of Destiny. Um, nobody uses Leap Smash, so nobody cares. Finding Sinbad Part 1 should now be universally possible. That's nice. You like to be able to do the new updates that uh, come out, so that's good. Now, Obsidian Dutchman Loot Potential Fix. It says Potential Fix in all caps. We're looking for specific feedback on this bug during test run, so um, I'm not exactly sure what they did to the loot if they increased drop rates. I know that the drop rates aren't great. Um, Obsidian Dutchman is an awful fight. I think it's one of the worst fights ever. I hate doing it. Luckily, I got all the drops I needed early on because that fight sucks. Um, but if there's an increased drop chance for loot, that's awesome. Do let me know if you guys do some Dutchman and uh, what you guys think of the uh, drop rates. And uh, and definitely tell King's Isle. Jungle crossbow, no longer shooting bullets. I have no clue what that means. I guess there's a crossbow that shoots bullets. I don't know. Sinbad Chapter 3, difficulty nerf. I'm definitely going to test this out. I want to see what they nerfed. Um, I don't know if it really needed a nerf. Maybe the musket boss could use a nerf because it kind of just... It's kind of just disgustingly, like broken if you like don't kill it the first round but um, other than that I, I don't know I, it'll be I'll, I'll have to see uh, this uh, this this nerf definitely let me know if you guys um, do any more Simbed chapter 3 um, male staffy weapons no longer occasionally use female vo vocals I mean that <laughs> that's nice <laughs> and um, and then cringe so <laughs> there's a picture of one of the Zaders from the, the new update. And that's uh, pretty much it for the update notes. So I'm gonna get in, actually first let me check out um, some of the Atmoplex posts. So one of the things to note, to note about the update is um, contrary to belief or hopes, there are no companion promotions. Um, Hockley's did mention it and obviously we, we've played the update. There aren't any companion promos. There's no Hockley's promo. There's no um, Argos promo even though we really want one he uh, has stated that they're gonna be their own bits of serious content not throw away add-ons so disappointing but hopefully we get to see those soon and then also there is no level cap increase which is also quite disappointing um, um, not yet at least so that's something to note about the update <clears throat> um, you can see test ROM is up there's some story spoilers that I'm not gonna spoil and also there are a couple new badges you can see here I'm gonna die for um, Grave Discussions, I like that badge name. And then the Orpheus Club, which I also really like. And this one actually gives Tartarus Ascended, it gives you a reward. And I'll show you it here. <clears throat> you can see the effect I have equipped on my mount. <coughs> <coughs> a little bit unfortunate placing there. Um, kind of looks like my gorilla had a little too much Mexican food. Let me get off my mount <laughs> real quick. Um, still unfortunate for my pirate, but either way... Um, <laughs> Fiery little effect. It's not bad. It's uh, it's it's, it's not bad. Oh, oh, oh my god! No, what my gorilla just did. Um, it's uh, yeah. I'll let you guys have your own thoughts about that. But um, cool that they're adding uh effects to badges at least. So that that's that's always nice. Um, and uh, I do like the the badge name, the uh, the Orpheus Club. Pretty cool. Um, yet again, here are the gear sets. You can see this one is for the male, and this one actually has the horns, which I like a lot more than the female one, which... Oh, never mind. Uh, that's also the male one. But the female one doesn't have the, the horns all the way grown out, um, so I like this one a lot more. Um, <clears throat> and also, he just recently posted all of the pieces of stat gear. Now, some of these I haven't even seen yet. Um, so this is actually gonna be a live reaction because he just posted these seven minutes ago So I didn't even see these so uh, I was actually gonna go through all these images, but let's just go through this now All right, so first off we have the Buccaneer gear Now something really weird. I don't know why these are all Will and, and, and you'll see a couple you'll see like 
some of them are weird. I don't know why they're, they, they don't give you the actual base stat that corresponds with the class. I don't, like, this should be strength. However, um, let's take a look at the Buccaneer gear here. So, as far as the stats go, awesome. 14 strength, 8 weapon power, 15 accuracy, good, am a good amount of health. I mean, you can't really ask for better stats. Just excellent stats. Now, as far as what the uh, actual grants are, Vengeance Strike on the hat, increased base will. So, I'm not even going to talk about the increased base will. It, it's dumb. It's useless. It, it's, it's dumb. It'll give you, like, a couple extra will, but you're a Buccaneer, so you're strength-based. Um, so, Vengeance Strike, it's nice. Vengeance Strike 5 is pretty nice if you can have it on your Buccaneer. Um, if you don't know, Vengeance Strike increases the stun chance of Vengeance Strike to 50%, which is very nice. But, um, there's just... I think there's just there's just better hats out there. You know, there's a Reckless Frenzy hat, there's... There's Corrupted Moo Hat, which gives Vicious Charge and a Super Strike. There's just better hats out there. There's Whale's Mine hats. I just don't think you really need the Vengeance Strike. Um, if you have Vengeance on your pet and you really want Vengeance 5, by all means, it's solid. It's not a terrible hat. Um, none of the gear really is terrible, but um, yeah, not my personal fave. Boots here, they give Buccaneer Jump. Um, uh, interesting. Could be situational. Maybe if you're like doing like Metal Guardian, you know, you have to jump over those fences, those fence gates. But other than that, kind of useless. You don't really need jump for Buck. It's 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 cool to like be able to have jump on your Buck. Um, yet again, situational, but um, not 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 great. There's 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 literally Blade Storm boots. If you use these over Blade Storm boots, I'm questioning you. And then finally, we have this rope here, Ares Underworld Garb. I haven't seen this one yet, but um, it is another one of those robes that do damage to yourself. I'm going to see if I can... I can't really zoom in on these. But um, basically, it's it's damage to yourself, and from what I've taken from it, um, all of these that do damage to yourself, they all do about 50% of your health. So whatever 50% is your health is it it will do uh, the same damage um, to yourself and then but in return you get an increase in armor and damage for three turns um, really mid do not use this power armor is you don't need it 50% in weapon power that just just use whales might just buff your whales might you know use weapon power to balloons crit the balloons like just don't go into half health because then you can't really frenzy and you can't really frenzy you're, you're going to be going in half health. You'll be in Tide. You know, maybe if you're in Turn the Tide 5 and you want to use it, but uh, don't use it. This is, I, I wouldn't. So, but very unique, I will say. So, now let's get into the Musketeer gear, which is very interesting. Um, stats, God tier. I, I mean, spell power, weapon power, accuracy, agility. Like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Strength? Stupid. I don't know why we're doing these opposite stat things. It's kind of weird, but whatever. Um, so the hat gives Burst Fire, which is interesting. It is interesting. Um, now, there's already a piece of gear, that the totem, the uh, Prince of Ilias Corporate that gives Burst Fire. You can also get Burst Fire from your pet. Um, and there's also the Deaths, the... Uh, the uh, Obsidian duck weapon that gives burst fire, but uh, nobody really uses that. Um, is it really needed? I, I I I wouldn't say so. I think there's just better hats out there. There's there's an Overwatch hat. There's Tempest hat. Um, there's there's Will's hat if you want to do like Will based shooty staffy. Um, I don't know. I mean, if you don't have it on your your pet, by all means you can use this hat. If you don't have the totem. By all means, you can use this hat. It's still a very solid hat. I think me personally, I'm not gonna use it because I, you don't really, you don't really need a rank three of burst fire, and I already have two ranks. Um, however, it is something very nice to have, and it is a very good piece of gear. So, next up, we're gonna move into these boots. Very nice boots, same stats, strength, poopy, but the Overwatch boots, it's awesome. Um, these are basically the boots that you're going to use if you don't have Frozen Tide boots. Now, me personally, I still want Frozen Tide over these boots. I like Frozen Tide 
so I'd rather use them over these boots. However, this is another way for you to obtain Overwatch 3, Overwatch 5, if you don't have, if you don't want to use the Hat, if you don't want to use the Death Spitter. You can now actually have Overwatch 5, Readied Spell 5, and Double Tap 5 all in the same pirate. I mean, just, literally just play Musketeer and you win. And um, we'll move on to the robe here. Another one of those um, self damage uh, powers. You can see Aim of Artemis. Yet again, 50% of your health. Um, but in exchange, you get a 50% increase in range and also weapon power. So if you have four range, it'll increase to six for three turns. Um, now, I don't know if it will round up your range if you have, like, say, say you have five range. Obviously, you're not gonna you're not gonna have like seven and a half range, so it might round up to eight. It might round down to seven. I'm not really sure, but it's okay. I would yet again. I just not really worth using. You know, musketeer. You just have AOE bombs. I don't know. I just don't really think you need to take all that damage. It only lasts for three turns. Um, the range increase is nice, but I don't know. I just I don't think it's that necessary. Not terrible if you want to do the the whole glass cannon sort of thing, but uh, not my fave. All right, on to the privy. So first we have a repost hat, agility as the stats. Um, as far as the um, the actual like base stats here on all the gear, awesome again. Will spell power, weapon power, very nice as well. Um, hat mid, you don't really need repost if you have if you're using blood hook. And you use this hat as well, you get Repost 2, which I guess is kind of nice, but don't use this hat. There's Tempest hat. There's Battle Zeal hat. There's Moo hat. There's just better hats. Don't use this hat. Um, boots, same thing. Witch Hunter, you don't really need Witch Hunter. Uh, for, for, to, to use, like, to use this as a, as a gear slot. It's just Tide boots. Moo Man shoe boots. Freaking Cane boots are better than this, I, you know. Privy kind of gets a little screwed over here. Um, not the greatest gear for them. Zeus's might, though, over here is pretty interesting. Um, 1438 damage, so same thing, 50% damage to yourself. However, you get an increase of 25% increase, not 50, 25% increase in damage, spell power, crit, and dodge for three turns. Which is nice, obviously. You're like, oh my gosh, holy grail of buffs. However, it's only for yourself, and we all know that Privy is not really your damage dealing class. Um, it can be nice. I can definitely see this like being situationally interesting. Um, if you're just trying to get like damage output from like Tempest and, and big guns. Um, but again, it's just not a team buff. That's kind of Privy's whole shtick is buffing the entire team and it's a selfish buff so I don't really think I'm going to be using it but it is quirky and it's not bad alright on to the swashbuckler gear which I have not really seen really I've seen the hat um, as far as stats go again just nut I mean gr <laughs> look at these stats I mean great great stats on the gear can't complain whatsoever Great dodge, great accuracy. So turn the tide on the hat. Nice. It's nice. It's quirky. Turn the tide could be pretty nice to have, but um, black fog hat exists. You know, and that's kind of the the whole thing with this this whole uh, update with the gear. Everything is pretty solid. There, there's just better. There's just better options I think out there that exist for for most of the pieces. Very nice. You can still use them if you don't have the better options. Um, very solid pieces of gear, but they're just better. Black Fog Hat exists. So, just, there's not really a need to use this hat. And even then, there's, there's forts and revives that I would still use over this. So, it's quirky, it's nice. Definitely not a bad hat to use. But, um, I just like things better. Boots, very interesting. Give you Sneaky Sneaky. If you don't know how Sneaky Sneaky works, um, it literally just says May Hide at the end of each turn. I'm pretty sure rank 1 of Sneaky Sneaky is I want to see 33 percent chance it could be 25 it's definitely not more than 33 I can, I can tell you that it's definitely not more than 33 it's either 25 or 33 I can't remember um, I think it's 33 I just don't know um, I don't find it all that great um, your hide goes away once the turn ends 
So you, you're only hidden for the enemy's turn. So it's more of a defensive hide than an offensive hide. So it's nothing crazy. Um, plus, I want my swashbuckler to get those repost procs. So uh, I, I wouldn't really use this. It's quirky. Definitely not bad at all. Just for the stats alone, and sneaky sneaky's not terrible to have at all. But it's just, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't really use them. Now, as far as the robe goes, we have Hermes Speed Blitz. Same thing, 50% damage, uh, or 50% of your health uh, taken away. However, you get an, a 50% increase in dodge and movement speed for three turns. So, um, no. <laughs> I wouldn't use it. I mean, you just have Elusive. You have Elusive that'll do this for you. There's just no point in doing this. Um... So, I don't really like any of the, the, the whole glass cannon robe thing. Um, not terrible, again, but just not my thing. I wouldn't really use it. Now, on to Witch Doctor, which probably is the most interesting of the gear. So, ready to spell hat. Um, nice. Very nice. Very good piece of gear. This is one of the only ones I could see myself possibly using. Um, another way for you to obtain ready to spell 5 if you don't want to buy the Hoodoo Bundle robe you have the hat here. However, um, I like to use the Tempest hat, the Tempest of Torpedoes hat, um, so you would be giving that up. So, um, But either way, very good hat. Um, if you're a Wish Doctor, I'd recommend you use it. Um, unless you have Tempest hat, then it's kind of really up to you, or if you want to use like Juju hat. But uh, very solid for, for uh, ready spell builds for Wish Doctor, for sure. Boots, Eagle Eyes, very interesting as well. Um, these boots are nice because Mormo and Grimtooth have no range, and those are your primary, like, damage-dealing Witch Doctor companions that you get. Um, it's nice, um, but then again, Frozen Tide. It's up to you if you want to give up Frozen Tide. Um, if you don't have Frozen Tide, very solid boots for sure. Very solid boots. I would actually probably use these boots if I didn't have Frozen Tide. So, very solid. I would say that they're very solid boots. Um, Eagle Eyes isn't very nice to have. And then onto the robe here. So pretty much it's a um, self damage again. However, you you get a uh, you get a scratch buff. You get a 70% 75% um, spell power buff for five turns, only to yourself though. Um, same thing. It's nice. It's probably the best one of the all self damaging ones. It's nice. I could see people using it. I can see myself using it in certain situations. But, um, I don't know. It's just it's just one scratch buff for myself. Um, so, I don't know. I don't see myself, like, using a turn for it. I think I'd rather just do, like, Great Juju if I'm gonna buff. Or Frozen Tide, or... I don't know. Even Blood Flames. I, I don't really know. Um, but Quirky. Definitely interesting. Definitely interesting. So... Um, that's pretty much it for the gear. Now, as far as my thoughts on the actual um, update itself, um, I'd give it about a, a 6 out of 10, maybe 7 out of 10. There's a lot of bugs. It's not my favorite. Um, it's, a, it's pretty much just reskinned Wiz stuff. Um, I do generally like the story. I think it's interesting. The voice acting, I think, is very solid. Um, I love... Um, I love, I love a certain character's voice acting. Um, there's a couple replaced voice actors, which is sad. Um, but overall, I give it about a 6 out of 10. There's not really a unique boss. Um, there's not really a, a unique boss for the, um, the actual update. I, didn't, I thought we were going to uh, fight somebody, but we didn't end up fighting them, which was a bit disappointing. And it's very short. I thought it was going to be at least like four hours of content, and it ended up being like two and a half, maybe two. So, um, a little bit disappointing. Um, however, not bad. I liked it more than the Simbads. I'll say that. I did like it more than the Simbads. It was more engaging. Um, and as somebody that doesn't play Wiz, it did still feel new to me, because I don't play Wiz. But, um, it would have been nice if we got some more unique areas. But um, I understand why Ki does the uh, the reskins. It's just easier. Or the, um, but yeah. Um, anyway, let me know what you guys thought of the update. Um, let me know what you guys think of the gear, um, and if you do any of the uh, testing 
intense realm. Let me know what you guys experience. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.